Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to install a regulator in the Diana Storm Rider. Let's check it out. We first looked at the Diana Storm Rider in 2017, so it's been a while. Since then, Diana has come out with a Gen 2 version with some nice upgrades and improvements over the original. One of the first things you'll notice at the front of the gun is an improved and longer suppressor moderator. It also changes up the position of the front sight just a little bit. They went ahead and added a two-stage adjustable trigger to the Gen 2 units, whereas the Gen 1 was unadjustable. And last but certainly not least is an upgraded bolt handle. Gives you a little bit more meat to grab onto, making it just a little bit easier to cock the gun and work that bolt action. Before we show you how to install the regulator in your Diana Storm Rider, let's talk about what a regulator actually is. A regulator is a device, a physical device that goes inside of your gun that is actually regulating the pressure in the air used per shot. Now this is going to ensure very consistent shot to shot velocities and hopefully that's going to translate into downrange accuracy. Now I know a lot of you might be thinking why a regulator for such an inexpensive gun? Well. At $200, basically, the Storm Rider represents a really nice value as an entry-level PCP air gun, but a lot of its competitors at just $100 more, like the Gauntlet and the Benjamin Fortitude, have regulators already installed. So for roughly another 100 bucks, you can put a regulator in yourself, adjust it to how you want it, and have a gun that's basically got many of the same features, a lighter weight, with a regulator as well for roughly the same cost. Now, of course, we need to know how the gun's performing before we install the regulator. So using the JSB Hades pellets, we're getting about 25 foot-pounds, but you'll notice a very pronounced shot curve. What we want you guys to key in on, though, is those seven shots in the sweet spot within 15 feet per second. This is the kind of consistency we're looking for for long-range accuracy out of any gun. So once we install the regulator, what we're looking for is that same 15 foot per second spread, but hopefully over a lot more shots. Your regulator kit is going to include the regulator itself, the installation rod, and a few extra O-rings just in case you need them. And on the front of the regulator, you'll find the adjustment face. Very easy to do. The manual kind of details what everything means and what everything is, but you can see it's adjustable between 100 and 150 bar right out of the box. Now there's one other part that doesn't come with the kit that we are going to be listing here at Pyramid Air and something I would recommend for all of you Storm Rider uh, owners that are going to be getting the regulators to install, this is what you're going to want to pick up. Uh, now this is actually from the Diana Bandit. This is the fill port and gauge assembly from the Bandit and that will actually fit right into the end of our air cylinder on the Storm Rider as well. And that's going to give you a pressure gauge for the gun because once we install the regulator, this pressure gauge here on the bottom is going to become our regulator gauge. Now that's actually really nice and something that none of the other $300 PCPs, in this case $300 once you install the reg of course, this is something that none of those other guns have. This is actually going to tell you if your regulator is working effectively uh, and efficiently when you fall off the reg, all of those things. So you're going to be able to have not only a reg gauge but your output gauge as well. Now you certainly don't need this part if you don't want it, but this is going to be very helpful and adds a little extra safety factor so you know how high you're filling the gun. One other thing I should mention, and a really nice selling feature actually, this regulator will also fit the Diana Bandit pistol. So for those of you Bandit owners out there that are looking for a little bit more consistent performance out of your Bandit, check it out. So the first thing that we're going to do with our Storm Rider is go ahead and degas the gun now. The easiest way to do this is by simply cocking the gun and dry firing it down to pressure. Now I've already gone ahead and depressurized the gun off camera here so we can make things a little bit more efficient for you guys but make sure that gauge is at zero go ahead and give it a dry fire and make sure that you're not passing air through the system still because that represents a safety risk so definitely make sure the gun is degassed safety first and at this point let's go ahead put on some safety glasses i always recommend that whenever you're working on your guns especially pcps and the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove the fill port assembly. So the nice thing about installing the Storm Rider regulator is that you don't actually have to take the action out of the stock, uh, which saves you some time and it makes it a little bit easier as well. Uh, first thing we're going to do is take this installation rod. Now this isn't actually what it was purposed for. You could use an Allen key or a screwdriver. And we're going to insert it into the fill probe end hole here. 
and we're just gonna go ahead and twist, make sure it comes loose. It should be relatively easy once the gun's degassed. And once we get this unthreaded, you can actually just pop that out and there is your fill assembly. And now we have our empty air cylinder that we can go ahead and install the regulator into. So before we go ahead and install the regulator into our tube, now we're gonna wanna select the output pressure that we're gonna run the reg at. Now, based on our chronograph numbers, that full shot string we showed you at the beginning of the video, if I set this guy right around 140 to 150 bar, I'm gonna be getting my max amount of energy out of the gun. But that effectively makes my functional pressure range of the gun 200 bar to 140 or 150, wherever I set it at. So, I'm not gonna get a whole lot of shots. They should be very consistent, but I'm not gonna get a lot of them. Now, uh, we're only putting out about 25, 26 foot pounds out of this 22 caliber here. So I'm okay with losing a couple foot pounds off of that and getting a few more shots. So I'm gonna set this right around 120, 125 bar. And the nice thing that Diana's done for us here is in the manual, they've given us a little energy graph and we're gonna throw it up on the screen here for you guys now. So you can basically see if I set this around 100 bar or 110 bar or 20 bar, wherever you set this, this is the energy level roughly that's gonna correspond with that pressure setting in a stock gun. So if you don't modify anything else inside of your Storm Rider, install the reg at a, that given pressure, this is roughly what you can expect. So per the instructions, they say 120 bar output on the regulator is gonna get me roughly 22 foot pounds of energy. I'm okay with that, so I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna insert my flathead screwdriver into the adjustment section of the reg, and I'm gonna take it from 100 to 120, so right about this mark here, that middle's 125, and then 150's over here. So that should be right about 120 bar. Obviously, we'll be able to confirm that on this gauge down here once we install the reg. But from there, I'm gonna go ahead, and take the installation rod, thread it into that adjustment face, just like so, and now I'm ready to install it. Now, just before we go ahead and install the regulator, I like to put a little silicone grease on my seals here, uh, and that is at least gonna lubricate us as we go ahead and slide this regulator down through the tube. That means if there's any burrs or as you're running it over those initial threads in the front of the tube there, uh, just to give it a little bit of extra uh, slickness so that it doesn't get hung up or caught. So now that I have my O-rings all greased up with that Hill silicone grease and ready to go, we are simply going to take the regulator on the rod, kind of get it started in there, and then hopefully just slip it on past. Pretty easy. And we're just gonna press it all the way down until it stops. All right, and once that is completely settled down into the air cylinder, then we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this guy from the front of the reg. There you go, the regulator's installed. Now we have to put on our brand new fill assembly and gauge block here. Go ahead and insert that guy in there. And we start threading her on. All right, and after a lot of threading, we're gonna get it nice and close here. And then we're gonna just take this rod again. Tighten it up that last little bit. Now we're gonna go air it up and see what our performance looks like. First things first, we're gonna take our fill probe with the quick disconnect machine on and insert it into our fill assembly. All good to go there. And then we're gonna take our fill probe and insert it into the fill port on the gun. So we're all aired up to 200 bar. We're gonna lead the line really fast. There we go, that's good. I'm gonna pull my fill probe out. Now taking a look at the gauge on the underside, you'll notice this has stopped, it uh, looks like actually right about 120, 130, so we'll call it 125, which is where we set up the regulator for. And this is now gonna be your regulator gauge. Now we're gonna actually show you what this is gonna look like as you're shooting, because this is gonna stay at a consistent pressure, assuming your regulator's working properly. So one of the nice things about having this secondary gauge telling you your reg pressure, not only are you seeing the regulator refresh with that little bit of movement after each shot, but this is also gonna tell you when you come off the reg. Once the pressure gauge here starts to fall, that's when you know you need to refill. Very simple to do. So you can actually use this gauge to reference with your fill gauge to make sure you are still on the regulator and in a usable pressure range. 
All right, so we're going to put our now regulated Diana Storm Rider Gen 2 and 22 caliber over the chronograph. Like we did for the first string, we're going to use the JSB Hades. These are 15.89 grains. And if you guys remember, we were putting out about 25 foot pounds of energy. Now, with the reg set around 120, 125 bar, probably going to be seeing velocities close to 800 or so, uh, 22, 23 foot pounds. So we'll see how close we get, but more importantly, let's see how many shots we're getting between that 200 bar and 120, 125 bar range with that consistency that we're looking for. Looking over our regulated results in comparison to our unregulated results is very telling. Within that same 15 foot per second spread range that we were getting seven shots unregulated, we're now getting 17 shots on the reg. We've lost about 30 feet per second, which only translates to about two foot pounds of energy, so a nominal loss there. And we've nearly cut our standard deviation in half. This consistency is going to lead to a much better accuracy potential downrange, especially at distance. So it's certainly fair to say the regulator is doing a very good job very pleased with these results. So that about wraps it up for the Storm Rider regulator install. Very easy to do. When you get the regulator kit, make sure you're picking up this gauge fill assembly piece as well. We'll link both down in the description and for you bandit owners also, the regulator certainly will work there as well. So definitely check that out too. Get a little bit better performance out of that. Now I really like the adjustability of this unit, really allowing you to fine tune the output power level of your Storm Rider. For me, a little bit more applicable in 177 than maybe a 22, but it definitely flattens out that shot curve and gives you a solid number of good usable shots for a very small cylinder. Whether you're a Gen 1 or a Gen 2 Storm Rider owner already, or if you're a Bandit owner, of course, this is a great upgrade that you're gonna wanna look into. Uh, it is a solid performer and gives you a lot of possibilities in terms of how you wanna set up your gun and obviously performs very well. Really pleased to see Diana come out with something like this, really owning that aftermarket. I love it, guys. You definitely need to check it out on pyramidair.com. Of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the video. As always, I'm Tyler Patner. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next one.